everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. Tonight I'm going to be attempting to do a design or recreate a design or similar design to one of my samples I made over the weekend. I'm having a little problem with the color scheme so it's like hopefully it'll look similar to what I did on the paper. It's pretty bad and you can't remember. I should write it on the back, right? Alright, I'm going to be using two number 12 flat brushes. Those are plaid one stroke brushes and then a number four round brush by Princeton and then a dotting stylus. Paint I'm using on this design are Wicker White, Berry Wine, Yellow Ochre, Linen, Vivid Orange, Cinnamon, and then Burnt Umber. All these are folk art paints. There's a combination of, of the uh, multi-surface and the enamels. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully I can nail this. I am a little nervous about it because I really am not quite certain exactly how I achieved these colors. But I am going to start by I don't even know if I really should have put white in this. Uh, actually, look, the linen. I'm going to use the kind of double loading, maybe triple loading my brush. I'm going to use the vivid orange, the cinnamon, and I might use a tad of the yellow ochre. Not sure. Just depends on what I get. But I am using the linen on the lighter side. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with this and see what what I work, what I end up with. Wish me luck. This is my, my week to be kind of crazy with colors and such. I don't know what my deal is. Alright, so on this one I'm just kind of just wiggling it out. Just coming up and down. I, I just don't want the leaves to be just straight on, you know, wiggly or I don't want them to be round. I just want them to have some texture to them, but not completely, you know, a certain, a certain amount or whatnot. Okay, so then I'm just kind of bringing it up, I'm going to bring it down a little bit, kind of bring it up a little bit, bring it down, and then I'm going to bring it around. And it looks different on gloss than it does anyways on my my paper so I'm assuming it, it will work out. Now you can try you can leave a little bit open in the center that's okay but you may not want to have too big of a center opening because you're basically just going to tap some different colors in there to close it up or to pull it all together. If that makes sense. Again, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush around a little bit because I want the this exterior part of the petals to be ruffly, but not necessarily like what I do on my leaves. Just a little, you feel like you need to close it in a little more, you can. And you just come in here with that, close it up a little bit. I'm going to do three, three of these type of flowers. And let's see how we're going to put these. And just kind of want to, again, just up and down a little bit. I'm going to go over it again just to make more opaqueness and just remember the thicker your paint is applied the more durable it's going to be I did remember those words in this video I couldn't have a memory, memory lapse in my last video I was like, what does it do? <laughs> it's like that's pretty bad, right? 
again. This design, when I was making it, reminded me of a fall design. It's going on already for fall again. Just got through Christmas, right? It's different though. I mean, it's a little bit different color scheme than what I normally would do. But that's okay, right? We want, want it to be a little bit different. Now the main thing too, if you're new to painting on glass, is that you need to make sure you wash your glass and then when you're done washing it, if you want to rub it off with some rubbing alcohol, that's awesome too because that will make sure that they, you get all the grime and grease off if you've been touching it or anybody else has been touching the glass. That helps. And definitely can help you out. If you have any questions or comments, if you, you know, like this video, please make sure that you give me a big thumbs up when I'm done. Subscribe to my channel if you would. I'd appreciate it. If you view this video at the end of the video, once it's done playing, there is a button that you'll see underneath the video that will allow you to share the video on your social network with all your family and friends. I would appreciate it if you would feel free to share this. And I'm definitely trying to grow my channel. I would appreciate any of the help I can get from you. That would be wonderful. Now once you're finished, you do need to allow with the folk art paint, you do need to allow the paint to dry for about an hour or so. And then uh, give it some, you know, give it that drying time so that uh, you can bake it. When you, when you put it into the oven, it does need to be cold. Very, very important that you have a cold oven. Then you start the heating process, add your preheat time to your bake time. If you aren't sure what that is, I mean you can either time it yourself and then add it on or just make sure you add at least 10 to 15 minutes on to your time because typically it's going to be at least at least that. Mine is probably around 20 minutes. It's not going to hurt anything if you bake bake the paint a little bit longer. It's really not going to hurt. So don't be too afraid of that part. Once it's done baking, then make sure you allow it to stay in there until it's completely uh, cooled off because if you don't then what you run into is the possibility of it cracking when you pull it out and you don't want that and if you've worked really hard on your your designs you don't want them cracking when they come out you definitely want to make sure that you give them time to dry, or not dry, but to cool down to avoid the cracking. Because you know, once you paint, put all this time into painting something, I mean, my goodness, you don't want it to crack, do you? I know sometimes you can be impatient, but there's a reason for the instructions that the manufacturer gives you. If you're not using folk art paint, I'm familiar with some other ones, but I would say to you, just make sure 
you read the manufacturer's instructions that come on the back of the bottle that you're using and you know definitely follow their recommendations because that is you know they know they know their paint so make sure you know, unless you've had time to, to do trial and errors with it to do something different I would not mess with it now once you've you know, pull it out you can I typically like to add some of the Mod Podge to mine and that's the Mod Podge for glass just for extra extra durability you don't have to you truly do not because the paint doesn't require it however if you want it to be you know to have some extra protection on it that would help But again, that's that's really you know your call. I've done plenty of it to where I didn't have any any extra co coverage, you know, coatings or anything like that to it, and it's been fine. But it is glass paint. You just have to treat it with respect, and. You know it'll be around for a while if you do so. I always say treat it like fine china. If you're familiar with that, how fine what fine ch china is. I don't know. A lot of people in today's world probably aren't even familiar with that. Now what I'm doing now is just taking the different colors and adding in my little what would typically be my greenery, I'm doing it in browns. So I say it kind of reminds me of fall with the color scheme. But I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty using all these colors. I guess that you can pull some other stems down in here if you want. Because I'm doing some of these others. You can make it like they're coming down into the bottom as well. There's going to be another one popping out over here. Again, and this item is a glass storage container that I'm painting on right now. And it's pretty large. It's a pretty large glass piece. You can do jagged, you know, jagged type pulls on these little branches and stems. They don't have to be all connected. You can do little pulls like that. Put some color into them too. I'll be doing some flowers on them here in a second. It's fun. And you know, just work it until you're happy with it. That's all you can do. Now that's why I say you can pull some extra stems down here. Make it like you got some more branches. They don't have to be the same length by any means. Definitely don't. I'm sorry. I think I'm off, off the camera down here. And you're just, yeah, bringing in branches, no big deal. You can always add to it too once you paint in the flowers. Okay, so at the top of one of these, this one's kind of thick. I'm just going to do like a bud. And I do like to add in some other colors when I'm doing this, not just one color. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just doing like just quick little strokes. 
Not a big deal. I haven't even really touched my white yet. And I can just do like a little stem here, pull it in. Might want to do some darker brown. Pull it into this stem here. And then I am going to do some fun little flowers. And I'm just pushing down. Just doing these little petals. Cute little easy, 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 easy flowers. Hopefully you like those. And they are pulling in a little bit of the brown. Not a big deal. They're not the only color I'm going to be using on them either. And you can put them like on the branches. You can put them off the branches. It really, really honestly doesn't matter. I mean they can be on the glass without it actually being attached to a branch. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to use some of my white now finally. You want to make them four petals, five petals, a mixture of both. That's fine too. So just really very um, loose, loosely painted flowers. Not anything real detailed by any means. And that is intentional, just keep that in mind. My paintings are meant to be for people to, to be able to do these. Whether they're a beginning painter, if you're an ex more experienced painter, obviously you could use them to get inspiration. But, you know, again, it's not meant to be hard. You don't want them to be hard. I want you to paint. I want you to use your creative side. Okay, and let's move over here. Gonna do basically the same thing. Very simple. I'm kind of rotating back and forth between the cinnamon and the yellow ochre. It's a little bit of both. And I'm going to be running another color up in here too. And you can use thinner liners too if you want. You need to make your branches a little bit thinner. That's fine. It's a nice fall piece, right? I don't know why it makes me feel that way, but it does. Yeah, I'll just drop it in there. You can go on that flower, it's fine. And I'm going to go back through, do what I did before, add the white on. If I feel like I need to add any more petals, I can do that. Again, they're just very loose. Very loose. You don't even have to put white on all of the petals if you don't want to. Some of them I have them are pretty heavy. Some of them. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you get through the entire video. 
Okay, and then like I said, when we do this, if we want to go back over, touch it up again, maybe put in a little bit more of the darker color, the cinnamon, you know, it definitely is a little bit darker. You can do that. This one's really white. You can just kind of, kind of work on it a little bit. But I'm okay with it being really white. It's all right. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is come in here and just throw in some burgundy little additions here. It just kind of gives it a little bit more color. It's just not all about the brown. These are just more like single taps too. They're not meant to be like a whole flower. that makes sense. Kind of sounds odd, but um, again, it just gives it gives it a little bit more color. Like that. And you can make it, you, know, you can put some white into these too. Sometimes I get too carried away with my whites. And you can use a different liner if you want. I'm just sticking with the same one. I didn't even wash it out. Just so you know. And I apologize. My furnace is starting up again. Alright. And I'm not going to do any over there. I'm just doing this color on this side. What I'm going to do is take my stylus. I'm going to tap in some centers here, wherever I think they should be. Put it in like that. Come over here and do the same thing. I think that kind of completes the flowers a little bit because they are pretty loose. And we're almost finished. So again, thanks so much for hanging in there. I do appreciate it. Have to do the centers. Oh, I didn't do some leaves here too. I gotta do some some fancy leaves. Well, let me go ahead and tap the centers in. I am just taking, well, what we can do is, is start off with this, take in the, the burnt umber, put in like that, just kind of filling in the center just with the round brush, nothing, nothing fancy. Now you can use other, other tools to do this with if you want. But it's just going to be a few different colors. Just nice and easy. Again, if you're new, you should be able to do this. If you're a new painter. This is just basic, just some basic stuff. Not even real stroke work except for the leaves on the flowers. And if you want, you can come back in, throw some of the yellow in there again, the ochre, into the centers, like that. Easy peasy. Okay, and then on the leaves themselves, for whatever it's worth at the bottom here, because it's not really not that big of an area. You can just do some regular big wiggly leaves. Come down and then flip them. Let's see here. Might throw a little bit of brown into it. 
it again. Make them a little bit thicker here. You can make them long too, because actually, in honesty, I want them to be a little bit longer. And you can go back with doing it on the glass. It's a little bit harder because you're flipping it. Sometimes you might have to just go back in and just paint it in to get the look that you're trying to do. And then I did, let's see, I did one over here. Sorry, I'm trying to, oops, the wrong way. Let's get it to where it's a little bit thicker. Since you want good coverage, excuse me, sorry. Still trying to get over a cold. You don't have to have green in order for it to be pretty with leaves. And then you can hook it up if you want. I'm not going to put a lot of stem into it because I really kind of like the way it has more of the natural stem look. But then you can do, do it like this, like we do some other types of flowers. Or leaves. God, I don't know why I do that all the time. And then you just take this and just go over it again. And it's brown. You have a little bit different leaf there. And if you want, you can do some spikier things coming out from from these branches. Like I said, I think I'm better at doing this with my flat brush than I am anything else. Can do more natural stuff looking things and even coming out from it this way you know lighten lifting up pulling it out like that and you have a nice design that you can use whether it's on glass wood paper doesn't really matter just whatever whatever you have you know I'm just showing you designs you can paint you can incorporate these into anything all right I wasn't sure if I was running out of time on my last the last part of the video and end up that it was still recording so when I go ahead and finish this up properly like I normally would do um, here's the finished design just to get a quick look at maybe something would be great for the fall. Um, I don't know. I just I like it. I like the colors and just the simplicity of it. Uh, if you like it, though, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Make sure, once again, that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post something new. And after you view the video, make sure you share this, hit that share button, share this on your social network with all your family and friends. And of course, if you want to stick around and view some other videos of mine, I'd appreciate that too. All right, uh, thanks again for stopping by. Sorry for um, the issues with my recording. I hope you um, stop by again and check out my next video that's coming up. And until the next time, you have a good one.